In view, we can either store assets inside of the public folder or in a pre-generated folder we get when scaffolding a new view project called assets. The question is, where should you store them? It's recommended to store your assets inside of the assets directory. But why? When assets are stored there, they only end up inside of the final build if they're used within the view application itself. This is going to reduce your final file size inside of the disk folder. Other benefits include hash file names. Therefore, you don't need to worry about browsers caching their old versions. In addition, by default, files smaller than 4 kilobytes will be converted into base64 URLs to avoid extra network requests. If you store assets inside of the public folder, then regardless if they are used or not, they're going to be included in the final file size. Let's take a closer look. Before we do that, if you could, be sure to leave a like on this video as it really helps out the channel. Also, if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that for more content like this. Alright, let's continue on with the video. So here inside of a view application, I have 5 images stored inside of the public folder and then an additional 5 inside of the assets folder. In this component, I'll just reference one photo from the assets folder within the template and then execute the command npm run build. This will build out the application for production. Inside of the disk folder, we'll now see the first 5 images from the public folder even though they were never used. Inside the assets folder, we'll see a hash version of the photo we added within the component and not the additional 4 we currently have inside of the assets directory. Now although it's recommended to store assets inside of the assets directory, there are some cases where you might want to store them within the public folder. You might need to store them here if you have assets that are not getting referenced within the source code, need to retain the exact file name since file names get hashed, or if you just don't simply want to import the asset first to obtain its URL. In most cases, you'll want to store your assets inside of the assets directory, but there are some cases like mentioned where you might need to store them inside of the public directory. Hopefully by taking a look under the hood of what happens at build time with assets using Vite gives you a better understanding of where you should store them inside of your application. Now one major update moving to view 3 built with Vite is how we define dynamic images. For example, if we are statically referencing an image within the assets folder, we can just define the path to the image without any issues. Assets that get referenced within the view single file component are going to be automatically converted into imports. However, one common task that we do in view is iterate through an array using a v4 loop to output markup. Let's say we have this array which contains our image names, and we want to output each image in an image tag using a v4 loop. Logically using view, we could bind the value of the param image defined on the v4 loop to the source attribute of the image tag using some template interpolation. However, if we do this and then take a look inside of the browser, we're going to see a 404 error. This is because Vite is not recognizing the path as it's just receiving a string. Before Vite, we could wrap the source attribute inside of a require method and this would resolve the issue. With V, we no longer have access to the require method. There are two different ways we can now resolve this, by directly importing the assets in the script or using the new URL method with two params, a path to the image and then import.meta.url that exposes the current module's URL. Combining these two, we're able to obtain the full resolve URL for a static asset. Let's take a look at both, starting with the import option. First, we'll want to import all five of the images inside of our script. Then replace the image names within the array with the name we gave each image in the import and update the source attribute to just be image. And inside of the browser, we'll now see our images. For the URL method, we need to specify a new URL constructor. We'll want to pass it the path of the image and then the import.meta.url to obtain the current module's URL and then append.href on the end and we'll want to duplicate this for each image that we have. And now inside of the browser, we still are going to see our images. It's also worth mentioning that this method also supports dynamic URLs via template literals. Now both of these are going to be valid options to handle dynamic image imports. The method you choose is mainly going to be determined on the preference you prefer. Alright, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you now have a better understanding how to store and utilize your assets within View 3. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.